Okay, welcome back to the third video in this second topic, data transmission. Here we're going to be looking at error detection and we're going to focus on the need to check for errors. We're going to look at different methods of error checking including parity checking, checksum and error checks and we're going to look at automatic repeat requests. So, why do we need to check for errors? Well, um, if we send data, and we've mentioned this before, if we send data between computers or over the internet, we need to ensure that the data that's been received is the same as the data that's been sent. Um, example I've, I've put in here, what if I send you an email that said you could now have Monday off school, and when you receive it, there's some electrical interference, some problem that's happened, occurred, and a bit has changed from off to on. So the word now has become the word not. What would, your be, what would be your reaction? Uh, can computers correct these sort of mistakes automatically and how would they do that? Um, yes, you go in school on Monday. When data is transmitted, there is always a risk that it may become corrupted. Um, data might get lost or we might even gain additional bits, bytes of information. Errors can occur during data transmission due to one of these three factors. First of all, interference. All types of cable can suffer from electrical interference, which can cause data to be corrupted or even lost. Problems during packet switching. Um, this can lead to data loss or even possible um, the gaining of data. If a packet has been requested to be sent again, um, and again, and we've, we might end up with additional packets of information. We might cause all sorts of problems. And finally, the skewing of data. We know about parallel transmission, and that sometimes um, data can can be out of sync um, when it arrives at the receiver, and therefore this can cause problems too. I've put this on screen. I want you to have a little look and see if you can read, if you can interpret. Um, what's being written in this blue rectangle. Now your brain works in a, in a very different way to a computer. A computer will look at this and will not be able to understand it. The words are not recognized in its inbuilt dictionary, therefore it can't understand it, and it's basically corrupted text. So while you may have had a little problem understanding this text, a computer, as I've just mentioned, would be completely unable to make any sense of it at all. Data corruption is therefore a very real problem to a computer. The previous slide could be the result of some data corruption in the transmission, and this means that the text to a computer is completely illegible. So we're going to look at three different types of checking to start with. We're going to look at parity checking, checksum, and error checking. So if we take first of all parity checking and we break this word down into two parts, the first part being par. Now I've got two pigeons here to explain um, what is meant by the def definition of par. As you can see they're equal, even, level, yeah the same, they're like. But if you think about, I'm using the, user, the analogy of the game of golf, if you're playing a round of golf and you get to a hole which is considered a par 4, that means that you've got to get that ball into the hole in 4 strokes. If you do, if you get it in, in 4 strokes, then it's considered you've, you've, you're on par. And this is exactly what we're going to do with this type of checking. We're going to look at strings um, of information, of bytes, of bits rather, strings of bits, and we're going to add up the number of ones in that string of bits. I'll show you here. So if, for example, we've got a string of bits here, we've got seven, seven bits of information, we've saved the first bit as being the parity bit. Okay, so in this example, if a byte is using even parity, then the parity bit needs to be set to zero or in the case of it's, if it's odd, it needs to be set to a 1. So in the top one, parity bit, if we're counting up the 1s, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So we're not going to add any more 1s to that. That's an even number of 1s, i.e. 4 1s, so we just add a 0. The bottom one, we're adding a 1 to it to give 
to give us five ones, which means it would be an odd number. It's as simple as that, odd numbers and even numbers. Now on the next slide, on this slide here, I'm going to go through the first few, but I want you to have a little look at this and you'll see just how easy this is. These come up all the time in um, paper one, exam paper one, and, and it's worth a considerable amount of marks and it's dead easy. So have a little go and let me know in the comments how you get on. So if we take this first one, we add all the ones together, one, two, three, four, five, but we're using even parity. So we would need to add an extra one in there to make it six ones, and that would give us an even number. The second one, um, we add all the ones together, one, two, three, four. We're using even parity, so we can just put a zero in there to make that work. The next one, even parity again, but this time we've got one, two, three. So we'd need to put a one in there instead of a zero to make it four ones, which would be four. And finally, I'm going to do this one odd. We can add the ones up. One, two, three, four. Obviously, four is an even number, so we'd put a one in there to make it odd. Please have a go at the rest. Pause the video if you like, and then I will show you the answers and see if you got them right. Not only can we do parity checks on bytes of information, we can also do it on data packets. And I've got an example here. I'm going to add an additional column at the end and an additional row at the bottom. And then I'm going to color the squares to make them, in this case, you can see there, I'm using even parity. So let's take a look. Well, if I move this up and I add some more rows and columns, an additional um, row at the end, of, as we can see, we're filling this in. And I'm going to make this even, so I'm going to add either a black square or a white square, depending on whether it's odd or even parity. And then at the bottom, in the bottom row, I'm going to do exactly the same. And then my entire packet contains even parity. Okay, sticking with parity checks, I want to look at a um, exam style question. Um, normally in an exam you would get a block of data such as this. Now, within this block, there is one bit that is um, incorrect and ruins the data. And you'll see why in a moment. So in this example, we have nine bytes of information that have been transmitted. Agreement has been made beforehand that we're going to use odd parity um, bef um, when we transmit. Another byte, down at the bottom here, another byte known as a parity byte has also been added to ensure that each row here is a um, is using odd parity as well. So here we go. First of all, we've got to count the no in each byte. We're going to count how many ones there are and make sure that all the ones add up to an odd number. So, for example, byte one, one, two, three. Byte two. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Byte 3, 1, 2, 3. Byte 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, so we can identify byte 4 as being the um, being incorrect because that's using even parity. The parity bit should have been changed to a 1. Okay? I'm going to work backwards now. Um, let's go down. Let's add, the, add up the ones in each column. So let's start with bit 8, um, 1, 2, 3, okay, that's odd, odd parity. Bit 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, good, par odd. Bit 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, that's 4, so that's using even parity. So what I can do now is I can highlight the bit 6 and I can highlight bit 4, and where they both cross, if I was to change that zero in there at byte four bit six to a one, then everything would be correct. But at the moment, because it's a zero, that is deemed incorrect. Okay, I'm gonna and I'll show you the answer in a few moments. Okay, did you get that? Byte eight bit seven. Well done if you did. 
Okay, we'll move on to another method of checking um, for errors, and that is check sum. And check sum basically means we're checking the sum, or we're checking a sum, a value that we're going to use on the data that we're, we're sending. Okay, a calculation. So a, a block of data is sent alongside a calculated checksum value. The receiving computer also has that value and calculates what it believes should be the checksum. Now if these checksum values are the same from the receiver and the sender, then everything's okay. So it's a little bit like it's a little bit um, more accurate, you would say, than um, parity checking, where parity checking only uses either odd or even. This one is based on a calculation. So we're going to send an encrypted message. So all the numbers I've put here below, 22, 13, 12, 7, 14, and 4, we can pretend that they re refer to, to a letter of the alphabet. Okay, both the sender and the receiver agree on a calculation and a number to divide the sum of these numbers by. Okay, a divider. So, to calculate the checksum value, this is what's been agreed, um, the numbers will be added together, and the number 16 we're going to choose. It can be any number you want, but the higher the number, generally the better. Um, the number 16 is chosen, and 16 is a is a, a power power 2 number. Is So 16 is chosen and will be our divider number. So what do we do? Well, we're interested in the remainder value. This will be our checksum. So let's add them together. 22 plus 13 plus 12 plus 7 plus 14 plus 4 is 72. Now we're going to divide this by 16. So 72 divided by 16 is um, 4. 4 lots of 16 going to 72 with a remainder of 8. So the checksum value that we're going to use is um, the value 8. Okay. So if um, so if we were to send another batch of numbers, or if one of these numbers was changed in any way then when the calculation was done at the other end, at the receiver's end, the remainder would be different. If it is, then we know there's a problem in there and we would need to resend the data. Okay? The third checking system we're going to look at is echo checking. Um, with an echo check, the receiving computer sends a copy of the data immediately back to the sending computer for comparison. So the sender sends the email, sends the message, and that's bounced straight back. Um, just to check whether or not the two sets of data have any errors that are compared with each other. If an error does occur, the data will be transmitted again. There's obviously drawbacks. This is not, it's not great. If the two sets of data are different, you will have no way of knowing whether the error occurred when, the original, when it was originally sent or when it was sent back. Echo checks require a lot of extra data to be transmitted. If you're sending a big file, a, a, a massive amount of data, it's going to send that massive amount of data back, and then it's going to send it back again. So it's not great, but that is echo checking, sending um, an exact copy of the data back to the sender from the receiver. Finally, I'm going to miss check digits and put that in the second video, because um, it's, it's to do with barcodes really, ISBN numbers and things. So we'll miss that out and then we'll finish off with automatic repeat requests, ARQs. Okay, this is a little similar to um, echo checking, but how this works, um, it's also called automatic repeat query rather than re-request. -re um, it's an error control protocol that automatically initiates a call to retransmit any data packets or frames or blocks of data after receiving flawed or incorrect data. How does it know? Well, when the transmitted device fails to receive an acknowledgement signal to confirm the data has been received, it usually retransmits the data after a, a predefined timeout and repeats the process a predetermined number of times until the transmitted device receives the acknowledgement. So it's basically asking for a receipt. ARQs are often used to assure reliable transmission over an unreliable unre service, a, um, a, a network over a long distance or, or something like that, something where there might be, might be problems. It's just asking for a receipt. Okay? And that is it. So that's the third video completed for 
um, data transmission topic two there, there will be a final video to watch if um, please subscribe and, and and get your notifications so you don't miss it um, that will be on its way very very shortly thank you very much indeed for watching bye bye for now